This is the great lord and master, Osiron the Eternal, or the artist formerly known as Great Roberto. I'm actually starting to kind of like this wild fucking hairdo that I have. I actually went out, <laughs> I actually went out in public like this the other day, and uh, I definitely get attention when I, when I do this. <laughs> but anyways, okay, I'm making a video again, and uh, this one is how the tarot trumps or the tarot keys relate to the ju the combined jewel and tree. If you watch my last two videos, um, the secret of Doth and um, I forget what the main title of it was, but something like you know. But it's when you combine the jewel, it, when you combine the jewel into the tree, it does some really wild things with the numbers, and you can see sort of over here what happens when you do that, as I've already explained in other videos, but. You know the top, the top triangle cancels to nine. The lower cancels <coughs> cancels to nine, and then what you're left with right in the middle of this thing is the heart of Oseron here. And I've explained that in the video, the secret of Daath. And what I was doing after I made that it, is over here. You see a construct with a sephiro are just barely there. Well, I did that because in this example, the sephiroth don't really matter. What matters is the tarot is the tarot trumps. And uh, what I decided to do was, if the sephiroth do create that magic when you invert the numbers like that, or when you combine the two structures like that, what happens to the tarot keys when you do that? So the first attempt at this was this over here. It says non-inverted tarot pairs. And it really does something amazing. But before I get into that, I want to fix something. If you watch the video on the Jewel of Creation, I just have to make an adjustment to the supernal triangle tarot key order on that. Because how it really should be is you see the Jewel of Creation here. you got one, two, then three. Well, the tarot keys should work like this. The one should be over here, then the two here, and then the three coming down the middle, and then four jumps from uh, two to three. And sort of what that's suggesting is is that it's the each tree sort of works in its opposite mode to set the stage for the actual action of the tree. So in this case, the you know the great source prepares the feminine in advance with the one and it sort of like you know creates the stage for this and then the second act is actually creating the masculine itself and then the third is you know the pregnant empress in this case is jumping down to the heart and then once that's all created then the action takes place from uh, masculine to feminine but it had to be the idea of the desire had to be created first before the masculine could act because, again, you know, you can't, the, the action has, the, the, the desire has to have a desired. That's the root of this. So then once that happens, then the action takes place into that. So that's how that goes. I, I had it drawn up the other way before. And again, I mean, these videos, a lot of these videos, I mean, I'm learning right along with you, basically, because, you know, this, this video series has exploded into a gargantuan thing now. I have, in this, you know, combining this series, the uh, Tarot and the True Tree of Life series, and the Proof of God series, I have about 20 videos on, uh, on this topic. You know, and I still have a couple more that I need to make, so. Okay, well, over here, now he, and I, I, I have to apologize in advance on this one too because this is a case where my technology or lack thereof is holding me back from really presenting the way I want to because I know that no one's going to be able to see this shit, the numbers on here. So the only way you're really going to get it, if you want to get it, is really you're going to have to draw it yourself and look at it because no one's going to be able to see what's going on and really appreciate it on a... Um, um, 
by his, you know, just looking at it you know, visually. You know, it's, it's, in this case, it's going to be up to me to present it verbally the best I can. <laughs> so, all right, what happens over here on the non-inverted tree? See, this is how I first started playing with the tarot keys and pairing them up too. And then I realized it wasn't inverted because you're going to see if if you look at this fused jewel in the tree over here, you should notice right away that there's a real symmetry going on. Like the red, the the red pathways are the pathways of you know the tree and the you know dotted black lines are what happened when you flip the jewel back into the tree and the heart of the jewel fills in Daath on this tree and then the Daath of the jewel is filled in by the heart of the tree so it's a simultaneous two-stage filling going on here. Both Daaths are being filled in by the heart of both constructs simultaneously, which is glorious. That's why this is so amazing. But when I started playing with pairing, pairing the tarot, I came over here, and basically what I have written down is the tarot card of both constructs on the same path, and then the circled number is what those cards reduce to. Like the example being, over here we have the magician, or this path here. The magician and then one, you add those up, two and one, it gets three. Now over here what I did, I have zero for the fool and then two for the magician. And I have that as a three as well. And people might be saying, uh, two and zero don't make three, it makes two. And I, I would agree with that, but you have to remember in this case, zero is a state. So that you know, zero becomes a one in this case. So it has to be acknowledged as one in this case. You know, it's a state. It's a card. You know, the, the fool is a card. It's a real thing. It's just showing the properties of zero. It's showing that zero needs to be acknowledged. So in this case, two. I mean, uh, zero is a one. So then, what you get is three and three. And what you're going to notice, I might as well get to the the point here. This structure balances perfectly on both sides all the way down until they, they balance perfectly all the way down and then once the pillars are completed then is when it changes a little bit. It gets a little bit weird after that but it still works. It just, you know, it, this will probably take you know more pondering and more reflection to really figure out what's going on and there could be mistakes in it. You know, this isn't this isn't as perfect as the other things, but it's close. It's, it's close enough to mention. It absolutely is, because it's uncanny, you know. Because it's one thing for the sep to combine the Sephiroth and have them perform the magic that was performed. But then when you start stacking the tarot keys together like that, well, that's, you know. And it, not only does that work, because the Jewel of Creation doesn't use zero, but the, tr the true tree of life does use zero in the tarot keys and the sephiro. So, you know, you're seeing the interplay of how that works together. It's kind of amazing. So over here, I'm just going to focus on the, on the root of the tarot keys. If you want to know what tarot cards go there and look at that and find out the interesting correlation of the pairs, you're going you're gonna to have to draw it up yourself or wait for the book. <laughs> Alright, so what we have up here is this path is a 3, and this path matches with a 3, okay? And I'm going to stay away from the pillar in the middle right now. I'm just going to focus on the peripheries right now. And then over here you have a 2, like these cards combine to form a 2. And on its opposite, over here, the cards form a 2. Same thing with this one. Uh, the root of these cards is a 4, and its mirror over here is a 4. And the same thing when you get down to here. This path here is the cards form a three. In its mirror, the cards also form a three. Same thing here. The cards form a five. In its mirror, the cards form a five. And then once that's complete and then tip breath starts acting, it does some, something inter interesting. It shoots twos out. So tip breath shoots a two out for these cards. Then it shoots another two out for these cards. And then over here it shoots a 2 out for these cards. 
And then the very next pathway after that action of Tipperath, all the twos, is a six. The card is reduced to a six on this lower cross path here. That, and then once it hits this last sephiro of Netsack, that's when things change a little bit. Because now the paired tarot keys form a nine on this side. But on this side, the paired tarot keys is reduced to one. Okay, so now what you're seeing, it's not a perfect match anymore like it was. But now you're getting the nine and then one, and you know, nine plus one is ten, and you know, ten reduces to one. And don't forget, I mean, the, you know, ten still is an important number. Like, I, I always said that, you know, uh, you know, toxic math, like, you know, Jewish math and all that, you know, the uh, metric system and stuff is toxic. Well, it is, if you're creating with it. See, I think it's fine to use that uh, metric system because it's a sterile grid. What, what that creates is a sterile grid. So, and it is sterile. So, but I think it's fine if you want to use that just to blind, just to sort of like a, you know, blanket sterile measurements. It's fine to use that, like, you know, in a science lab or something like that, if you want, because it's easy. It's definitely easy. But if you are creating with math, you definitely don't want to use that. You definitely don't want to create things with the metric system. You want to use, you know, the divine measurements of, you know, 12 or 16 or anything like that, you know. So, so, but once it gets here, we start seeing the 9 and then the 1. That's where it goes off a little bit. And then down here... But, you know, don't forget, these lower three pathways don't um, pair up with anything because the jewel of creation doesn't use those pathways. So these stay, you know, this one stays nine. This one, the world, stays three. And then 20 over here stays as two. It, it, that's going to need, you know, you know, if you add all those up, it comes to, you know, comes to 14, which is temperance. And that reduces to five. So that's that. So all of these balance. And on this, the middle pillar, on this one, the middle pillar, the top section reduces to four. This section here reduces to two. So that's a four plus two is six. And then if you add the world to that, it becomes nine. Same thing over here on this pillar. If you add this five, don't, don't forget, these are mirrored, so it's the same thing on both sides. If you add this 5 and this 4, that cancels to 9. Uh, the pathway, the cross pathways, reduce to, in this case, I think it's 21. Yeah, they do. In this case, the three pathways form 21, which is a 2 and a 1. It seems that these middle pathways always revert to a 3. On every construct so far, these cross branches always revert to a 3. It'll either be a 12, a 21, or you know, something like that, and then it'll, it'll produce a 3, yet. and I haven't seen it deviate from that yet. And this is with paired tarot keys. This is like stacking the, the tarot, so this is, so it creates a perfect balanced thing like that. And then after I finished this, and after I finished that construct, and was marveling at how amazing it was, I realized that when you flip the jewel back onto the tree like that, it doesn't do that, so I had to readjust the whole thing. So now over here, what you, but you still get a amazing correspondence with the numbers. Over here, you get the supernal triangle, you get a two on this side, a two on this side, I'm going to stay away from the middle pillar right now, you get a two on this side, a two on this side, down here, you get a canceling 9 on this side, 9 on this side. Same thing here. You get 9 on this side, 9 on that side. And um, down here, after you finish the pillars, what happens is this pathway becomes a 1, and this pathway becomes a 2. And then the, with the world down here is 21, it's a 3. So you're seeing, a, you're seeing how... This sort of like a little triangle structure, you get a one, then a two, and then a three with that. And then, of course, you still get the same nine over here and the two over here because these lower three pathways don't have anything to invert with. So that's that. And on here, the cross pathways 
add up to 12 directly. You got 8 on this one, 2 on this one, and then 2 on this one. It's also a mirrored balanced thing. You got 8 in the middle and 2 on either side of it. And that forms directly to 12, which becomes to 3. So this one is 12, this one is 21, and they revert to 3. Now, over here on the middle pillar, this is what happens on the middle pillar with the um, tarot pairs. The top pathway is a 7, and that, if you use the cards, if you assign a tarot card to the pairs that are created, you get the chariot, strength, and that adds up to 15, which is the devil, and the devil reduces to 6, which is the lovers, and again, is it masculine, and then the last card, the world, uh, reduces to a 3, and that becomes 9. So the middle pillar still, on both of these constructs, cancels up to 9. Okay? Now, you're going to see in here, with all this weird angular crossings of pathways, how did I ever figure that out and figure out how to make sense of that with the tarot keys? Well, what I did was, I just simply, once I inverted it, I just used, I, I just basically isolated the pathways that were compromised due to um, the uh, inversion of the structure. And I isolated those. It ends up being, um, you know, six pathways. It, or it's actually 12 pathways if you use two tree using both the structures, but it forms six pairs. Interesting numbers, six and three again. <laughs> but what happens is, I, so I just used the lower ones like this one here, this lower structure, I used the upper structure on the other one. Uh, on this I used the two middle combinations. And then up here I used the upper one and then what would be the lower one on the other one. So I kept it uniform. Okay. And what you get when you do that with the inner pairs is you get a 2-3-2 two, two combination and it ends up being perfectly balanced. And then you add that up, you get 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 7 is now on either side. 7 plus 7 is 14, which is temperance again. And temperance is you know, a card about blending, blending of energies, blending of masculine and feminine and all that. So we're seeing interesting things going on with this. So this is what happens when you, the tarot keys, when you invert the structure, when you invert the structure into itself, this is what happens with the tarot keys in how they produce pretty near perfect symmetry. I mean, it's not absolutely perfect, but the, but the spots that aren't perfect tell a story in and of themselves, but it's going to take a little bit more unpacking, maybe. There could be something in it that I haven't seen yet, and it probably is. But over here, when you stack the tree, just, you know, when you stack the tree right onto itself, this is what you get. And this is damn near perfect symmetry it is perfect symmetry except for the very end, but that combines to form to 10. And then these lower sephirot here, these lower pathways, never had a pair to go with it. But now, the, one interesting thing though that I, I did play with, if you take these lower pairs and you add the same card to it twice, it does produce some interesting numbers though. I'm not saying that's valid or anything, I'm just, but it does it does produce some interestingness. If you add 18 to 18, or obviously that reduces to 9. But in this case, on this lower path, 21, if you add 3 to 3, that becomes 6, and then you have a 3-6 combination again. If you add 2 to this, it becomes 4, and then 4 plus 2 is 6. But again, you know, that's really pushing things, but it just, you know, it is interesting though, so. So this is what happens when you stack or pair the tarot cards with the structure of the jewel and the tree simultaneously. I hope this is somehow makes sense. I know that imagery is, you know, it's, you know, you're not going to be able to see what's going on on this video. I know that. I mean, it, 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 it was it was so hard to draw this up using fucking chisel tip markers, big fat worn out chisel tip markers. It was like a really, I don't, so the fact that it even came out this good is remarkable, but I know you can't see, I mean, you can't see anything, you can't, 
The only thing you can really see on this is probably like the, if you look at the combined jewel and tree here, it really is a gloriously, a glorious looking structure because it shows what's going on when you do that, how everything cancels out up here, all down here cancels out to nine, and then what you're left with is Oseron's heart right in the dead center, which is perfect symmetry. And then if you look at, again, like I already said, the lines, if you look at the interplay of lines, it forms a really beautiful structure of geometry. As a matter of fact, if you look at the lower heart here, the masculine structure, it forms a pyramid, like this line and these dotted lines form a triangle. And if you take the feminine heart here, it forms, a, uh, it forms an inverted triangle down here, and they sort of invert in the middle. The symmetry is really beautiful. Even on this imperfect structure, you know, really what you know, I would need to do is draw this up using a program or you know, some tools that would allow me to be absolutely precise with the geometry. And if that was done, you would see some amazing, an amazing work of geometry there. It's just, you know, I drew this by hand and I was fucking high when I did it. So, I mean, there's, you know what I mean? there's only so much I can do, you know. But that is that. I hope it was helpful and namaste.